This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome into you. Hope yours is off to a great start. I'm Rebecca Smith. <laughs> it's a cold one. I'm Bill Bryant. Just about 10 degrees in Lexington right now. Feels like zero in some areas this morning. Tuesday, January 19th. Yeah, now at 6 a.m., another bone chilly morning in the bluegrass. It's leading to several school closings and delays. We'd like to help you get ready for the day. Also, for the second time this month, the cold weather has led to a person's death. This time, it's in southern Kentucky. And you can see those air temperatures out there right now running 9, 10 degrees. Factor in the wind and you come into some of the sub-zero or slow single-digit territory. That's one issue that we have out there currently. Tomorrow, it's all about accumulating snow. And that's just the first of a couple of chances. We'll track it coming up for you. All right, so here we go. Thank you, Jim. Well, it's another really, really cold morning. So much so that dozens of Kentucky schools have either closed or delayed this morning. They included are Bourbon, Clark, and Jessamine counties, each of those on a two-hour delay this morning. It is a normal start time, though, in Fayette County. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at the bus garage in Lexington to bring us up to date as they're getting ready to go pick up students. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, a lot of the buses here, they're cranking up. They're starting to warm up as they prepare to head out on these roads, pick up students. Now, the big question for many school leaders this morning was, is it just too cold to have our students standing out in these bitterly cold temperatures? Well, for many of them, that answer was yes. As you just mentioned, a number of school districts said it was just too cold to start school on time this morning. Now, we're uh, taking a look at the number of closings and the number of delays that are coming in so far. Now, those closures are stacking up in Wolf County, McGoffin County, Knox County, and Nicholas County. Now, there are many other counties who are operating on a two hour delay instead. A few of those are Jesmond, Clark, Bourbon, Bath, as well as Breathitt County. Now, these dangerously cold temperatures that we pushed through somehow yesterday, well, they're just still hanging around. And uh, Jim Caldwell, he gave us a little peek at that forecast just a moment ago. But these temperatures this morning, we're looking at uh, temperatures with the lows near the single digits and those wind chills dropping down near zero degrees. So very cold out here. And when it is this bitterly cold, you're looking at frostbite and hypothermia, uh, serious health risks happening in just a few minutes if your skin is exposed. So again, the big debate for many school leaders this morning, do we stick our kids out at these bus stops waiting in these conditions? So uh, if your kids are heading out this morning, you want to take uh, maybe a note from someone who's out here shivering in the cold, you will want to layer them up in as many layers and bundles and coats as you possibly can. Maybe even throw a little courage in there because they will need it, especially when that wind starts to blow. Now, of course, we're continuing to keep a look at uh, the closings and the delays page on our website, WKYT.com, for any additional school information that might be coming in there. And of course, you can always check out that full information, that full list there for yourself. Uh, but as always, we'll have the latest information for you right here on WKYT. That's the latest here in Lexington. I'm Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you very much. In a weather related tragedy in southern Kentucky in Laurel County, the coroner says a 95 year old woman died from the cold weather. Police say Dorothy McKnight walked away from the Laurel Village assisted living community in London. She was later found dead outside a nearby home. Police say McKnight died of exposure to the cold after falling off of someone's porch. And this is at least the second cold weather related death in Kentucky just this year. Last week in Lexington, a homeless man was found frozen to death behind Wildcat Warehouse on South Broadway. Well, being outside in the cold can be very dangerous, but that's just part of the job for first responders. No matter the temperature, Lexington's firefighters are always responding to calls. They say the cold weather does add another sense of urgency. The difference for us in this kind of weather with a subject down or a missing person, uh, it becomes more urgent for us because of the temperature. Well, the gear firefighters wear protects them from the heat of a fire, but doesn't have much insulation. The Lexington Fire Department has a warming unit that firefighters can go into after fighting a fire. Well, with a chance of snow in the forecast, remember you can track the winter weather and traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for your smartphone or tablet. 604 now on WKYT this morning, and the murder case against a Scott County woman goes to trial today. Melinda Turner is accused of stabbing her boyfriend to death in August of 2010. Police say she killed 26 year old Maxwell Pomeroy Jr. in their Georgetown home. Richmond police are needing help in honoring one of their own in our nation's capital. Officer Daniel Ellis was killed in the line of duty last year. You'll recall that. In May, his name is going to be added to the national 
National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. And Richmond police are hoping to send some officers to that ceremony. So the Madison County Fraternal Order of Police and Richmond Police are going to be hosting a pancake breakfast on February 27th. It's a fundraiser at the First Baptist Church on the bypass. The money raised will be used for the trip. Well, we could find out today if the city of Nicholasville will be approving a needle exchange program. It's already cleared one hurdle in the city commission. WKYT's Mike Byers at our live desk to explain where the issue goes from here. The final step towards getting approval for the syringe exchange program can happen tonight when the Jessamine County Fiscal Court meets. This after last week when the city commission voted 4 to 1 in favor of a resolution for the creation of the program. It's also been approved by the Jessamine County Board of Health. The program would be open one afternoon a week and would aim to build trust with addicted individuals, also offering them addiction counseling. The Jessamine Journal says the program could grow to roughly 200 participants. The public health director hopes the city can receive funding through the heroin bill for the program. Nicholasville would be the fourth in the state to adopt a syringe exchange. Programs already exist in Lexington, Louisville, and Pendleton County. At the live desk, Mike Beyer, WKYT. All right, thanks, Mike. Lexington is known as the horse capital of the world. Horses are what many tourists come to the bluegrass to see. Now one group wants to bring more of those visitors to eastern Kentucky. It's proposing to build an Appalachian Horse Center to help educate people about horses. Organizers are looking at potential sites in nine counties and hope to choose a location by the spring. They say the center would also create new jobs. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> It is first alert severe weather day. The reason, the cold this time, but it's one that's going to be extended. I, I promise it's going to go from today all the way into the weekend, most likely as we are tracking rounds of snow beyond what you have out there today. And some of you are seeing some very fine flakes flying through the air. 10 degrees right now in Lexington. That's the reason we have it, uh, the uh, severe weather day initially. But the snow is just kind of uh, the cherry on top, it looks like. 9 degrees right now down the road into Richmond. Factor in the winds. Feels like two below zero in Lexington. If you walk outside right now, that's what it's going to feel like with that wind. Just a little bit of a breeze, too, by the way. One degree right now is what it feels like in Mount Sterling. And five below in Moorhead. Right now, tracking on Defender Radar Network, some light snow falling across parts of uh, eastern Kentucky. There you see it hanging along the Mountain Parkway and uh, down into uh, parts of uh, McGoffin County, Breathitt County, Lee, Owsley County. So a little bit of light snow still flying through these areas and even some in Lexington and central Kentucky as well. Just harder to see on radar. Uh, that right there, what we're tracking is a little bit easier, even into hazard as well. Snow out there this morning has no uh, nothing tied to this. Winter weather advisory kicks in tomorrow morning at 4 o'clock and runs through tomorrow evening. That's for a completely different system that's sweeping in. Here's the way it breaks down. We look at Wednesday. Snow system arrives uh, from our west, one to three inches for many in our area, and some higher totals to the south, not southeast, but just generally into the south. Winter storm threats starts to roll in here late Thursday going into Friday. Starts out as a little wintry mix and then changes over to snow and then it continues into your Saturday as well. So that is our next couple of systems coming at us. The first one you can see in the hour by hour forecast. Watch as we track it and later today and into the early morning hours on Wednesday. Snow breaks out initially around anywhere from 4 to about 7 o'clock. You see those bands of snow coming together where you see the blue. That's some heavier stuff coming at you. And it will continue as we head through the day. Rounds of snow. First, I think, decent accumulating snow that we've seen so far this season. Here's how much we expect and where. One to three across the swath here in Lexington, down to Richmond, London included in on that. And you see that bigger swath, uh, uh, a few counties could get in on that three to six inch total. Seven day forecast, action packed as we go through the next little bit here. More snow coming at us. Wintry mix starting on Thursday. Then it's more snow Friday, Saturday, and yeah. beyond. <laughs> so we follow that red bar along, and that's uh, the days that we have concerns really about the weather, right? Yeah. It, it is, and likely have severe weather days running all through that duration because it's going to be a pretty treacherous time around here. Okay, everybody, uh, heads up, prepare, get ready for that. Yeah. Six oh nine is our time this morning. Each morning we bring you weather and traffic together. It's been a good ride in for most this morning. Let's check in with Officer Don and see what's happening now on the roads, Don.
Hey, good morning. Well, other than the cold, we seem to be getting there. Of course, they may have to work on Richmond Road again today, approaching the circle. So expect some issues there over to the right as we get into rush hour. And on I-75 around the 113, that's southbound. Let's get a quick look outside. We'll show you overall traffic flow on this cold morning. Some construction stuff happening downtown, but not much of an impact just yet. Uh, to Nicholasville, 11 minutes. To Paris, 19. Winchester's 26. And we're doing great coming in from Richmond at 23 minutes. Now back to you. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. We'll keep everybody uh, updated as yep. we go throughout the morning. Again, Fayette County Schools on a normal schedule today, but we do have uh, lots of other delays and cancellations. 610 right now. This is an interesting story. It is. Uh, we are hearing from a Tennessee teacher accused of putting three kids in the trunk of her car. Right, and she's trying to explain it, and <laughs> we're back on WKYT this morning in just a moment. Welcome back. It's 614 this morning. Michigan's Governor Rick Snyder delivers his State of the State speech today. This is amid growing anger over the state's response to Flint's water contamination crisis. A lot of emotion over this. Certainly hundreds of demonstrators gathered outside the governor's residence yesterday calling for his arrest and resignation. Attorneys representing Flint residents are planning to announce two new class action lawsuits today targeting Governor Snyder. Two weeks until the Iowa caucuses and the battle for the White House is intensifying. Campaigning in South Carolina yesterday, Hillary Clinton continued to present herself as President Obama's heir. Well, Bernie Sanders stuck to the issues at an event in Alabama. On the Republican side, Donald Trump courted evangelical voters in Virginia as top rival Ted Cruz accused him of not being a trustworthy conservative. A middle Tennessee teacher is facing charges after police say they found three kids in her trunk. Police say a concerned witness called them after seeing a woman with kids in the trunk of her car at a gas station in Murfreesboro. Police say that woman, Andrea James, had three children ages 9 to 10 years old in her trunk. They found six other kids in the cab of her car. Parents were called to get their children, but James says the children were never in her trunk. Well, the doors were open, so let's say that. Now, when the, when the trunk came up, we had all their things in the back trunk because they needed to go home. I only needed to transport them home at this point. So when I got there, all the kids was like piled up inside her vehicle, crying, scared, was crying for their mothers, you know. Yeah, I was very shocked. Well, James is charged with reckless endangerment. The school system says she was a part-time tutor and would be placed on administrative leave. Hmm. Strange story there. <laughs> it's a little odd. Well, this morning, the president of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences promising changes and quickly. Uh, but as John Cha Champion reports now, it may not be enough for quiet calls for people to boycott the Academy Awards over its all white acting nominees. The president of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences is promising more diversity. We're all disappointed. I mean, last Thursday was a little bit of a shock. In a statement Monday, Cheryl Boone Isaacs wrote of this year's all-white acting nominees, I am both heartbroken and frustrated about the lack of inclusion. Her response comes amid calls for a boycott of this year's Academy Awards. Actress Jada Pinkett Smith said says she will sit out the ceremony. Begging for acknowledgement or even asking diminishes dignity. Film director Spike Lee also plans to sit out. Monday in an Instagram post, he wrote, As I see it, the Academy Awards is not where the real battle is. It's in the executive office of the Hollywood studios and TV and cable networks. Oscar nominees are chosen by a 6,200 member voting body, 93% of whom are white, 74% male. Director Alejandro Inarritu spoke about the controversy in Paris last night. His film, The Revenant, is nominated for Best Picture. When we can't see ourselves in the cinema, there's something going wrong. So I think a lot of things has to be improved. The Academy says it's now taking drastic steps to alter the makeup of its membership. Don Champion, CBS News. Well, he co-founded the group The Eagles, and he was part of the history's most successful songwriting team. As you'll recall, Glenn Fry actually performed in Lexington just a few months ago, but he died yesterday in New York following complications from rheumatoid arthritis and pneumonia. Fry, uh, Fry that has teamed up with Don Henley to form the popular band known for hits like Best of My Love, Desperado, Hotel California, and One of These Nights.
some classic, classic songs there. 618 is the time. It's just called a social media panic. Twitter was down for hours this morning all over the world. That explains it. Why well, couldn't get on there? They apparently suffered a total outage. Users trying to access the site initially got messages warning the network was over capacity or was suffering from an internal error. According to a British newspaper, The Guardian, the company confirms that the outage from a support account at Twitter, users were unable to see the tweet. Twitter came back online just before 6 this morning. All is right with the world, right? Trader Joe's recalling its raw cashew pieces over concerns there may be contaminated with salmonella. No one's reported getting sick from eating them. The company says the bagged pieces have a best buy date of July 2016. They were sold in more than two dozen states, including Kentucky. A new report projects that robots could take over more than five million jobs over the next five years. The authors say more robots will replace laborers. There will be an increase in artificial intelligence and automated call centers. The report found office and administrative jobs are most at risk. Well, now. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Uh, interesting trend. 619 on WKYT this morning, and we're just getting started. And it's so good to have you with us on this Tuesday. A question, are you getting enough sleep? A new study says it is possible to catch up on lost sleep. I'd love to know how. We're tracking a little bit of snow out there across parts of eastern Kentucky this morning, that and cold air. But another system comes at us for tomorrow. Widespread accumulations. We'll track it for you. Coming up. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. Very, very cold start to this day. 623 right now. Well, it is another very cold morning, of course, and we're tracking two chances for accumulating snow. And that is what is trending this hour. A lot of interest in this. Because of the cold weather, several school districts canceled or delayed classes today. But it's a normal school day in Fayette, Madison, and Scott counties. Those buses ready to go. Melinda Turner's murder trial is set to begin today in Scott County. Police say she killed her boyfriend, 26-year-old Maxwell Pomeroy Jr., in their Georgetown home in 2010. Cold air is out there, guys. We were talking about it. Uh, most cases, the actual air temperatures are coming in probably somewhere between 5 and about 13 degrees in central and eastern Kentucky. But when you factor in the wind, and that's what you're exposed to when you walk outside, it's a different story. It feels like two below zero right now in Lexington, and it feels like five below zero in Moorhead. And we will catch a little bit of relief from this, I believe, as we progress through the daytime hours today. Yesterday, wind chill readings were single digits all day long. Out there right now on our Defender Radar Network, tracking some light snow passing through parts of uh, eastern Kentucky. Very light, very fine snow showers will be working their way through that area as we advance uh, through the next few hours. Tomorrow, however, it won't be fine and it won't be light. It'll be a very different situation as we're tracking a winter weather advisory for tomorrow as a potential of widespread accumulating snow comes our way. It's the first of a couple of systems that will roll into the area this week. This one could bring one to three to Lexington. The other one, well, it could bring a little bit more. We'll track that uh, as the week progresses for you. It's a little, still a little too early, guys, to, to nail that one down completely, but uh, it has potential. Jim, one at a time, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> but that other vintage talk about possibly is on Friday, so heading into the weekend. Uh. We'll see. Uh, coming up on 625 on WKYT, we've often wondered about this, uh, working the shift. Always. And results of a short-term study suggest that you can catch up on your sleep over a weekend, and doing so can reduce the risk of developing diabetes. The study used 19 healthy young men eating a controlled diet. It found getting fewer than five hours of sleep on four consecutive nights hiked their diabetes risk 16 percent. But after sleeping more than nine hours for two consecutive nights, that risk returned to normal levels. Chronically sleep-deprived people are more likely to develop other health problems such as weight gain and high blood pressure. All right, so you have the excuse there for yeah, <laughs> hibernating like on the weekend, right? Nice excuse. Uh, today is a very special day for an Oklahoma couple. Lois and Bill Larkin are celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. Wow. They were high school sweethearts before they got married. They ate lunch at Tulsa's Mayo Hotel yesterday because that's where they spent their wedding night seven decades ago. We've had a lot of good memories. I've never won an argument in 70 years. Because he was always wrong. <laughs> there you go. The <laughs> wife is right, right? <laughs> Bill says he's learned over the years if you get into an argument and you know you're right, 
don't say anything. <laughs> but if you're wrong, you better apologize. Sounds like he's got it figured out, hey, right? He's got it, right. And so does she. Congratulations <laughs> to both of them. That's why they have made it so long together. That All is right. pretty cool. Yeah, it really is. All right, it is 626 on WKYT this morning. Great to have you with us. We have a lot of news this morning. We've got big news for the UK football team, the Big Blue Nation, waking up to reports that an offensive coach is leaving. Reminder, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $30 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $50 million.